was that inheritance. He didn't know the location of that inheritance. But the Heavenly Father called him and called him to inherit, to come to a place where he would receive as an inheritance. And then he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise. As in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and with Jacob, Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob, dwelling, living together with Isaac and with Jacob, the heirs with him, joint heirs, the heirs with him, joint heirs, the heirs with him of the same promise. That's the implication of being a joint heir. Heirs with him of the same privilege, of the same promise, of the same resources, of the same riches, of the same virtue, of the same blessings. And so when it says, we are joint heirs with Christ. That means we inherit with Christ. The riches of God. The resources of God. The great things that the Almighty God has. That Christ can lay claim to, with you, as the children of God, as the sons of God we can lay claim to all those things that the heavenly father has preserved and provided for christ and anytime you want to pray you ask yourself if jesus was in this situation what can he claim what will he ask for what he will demand of the lord and what will the heavenly father give christ if Christ were in this same situation, then you say, because I'm a joint heir with Christ. I inherit together with Christ all the resources of the Heavenly Father. I can claim the same thing to you. I can demand the same thing to you. I can ask the same thing that, the, that Christ my Savior, my Lord, would have asked because I'm a joint heir with Christ. In Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, from verse 3 to verse 6, this is a mystery to be a joint heir, to inherit the same thing with Abraham with Isaac, with Jacob, with Israel, and with Christ himself. Ephesians chapter 3, reading from verse 3. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. This was hidden long ago. This was unrevealed, unveiled long ago. Or built long ago, but now it's opened up, it's revealed unto us. It's no more a mystery because it is now revealed. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto us, unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This is now revealed unto us. What is the thing that is revealed? Verse 6, that the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs 
to the gift of the grace of God given unto me, sorry, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Fellow heirs, joint heirs, heirs together. That's the implication. That all the promises that were made to Abraham, now we are fellow heirs. All the promises that were made unto Isaac, now we are fellow heirs, joint heirs. The promises that were made to Jacob, to Israel, now we are fellow heirs. Promises to Israel. The promises to Israel. That we are now fellow heirs. Have you read sometimes as you go through the Old Testament, the promise of God, the promise of God, and the promise of God. And then some people will say that promise was made to Israel. The promise of salvation. The promise of healing. The promise of deliverance. The promise of prosperity and the promise of being a conqueror, being a victor. The promise of having all the good things they desire. The promise of rest in your soul, peace in your mind. As you look at the Old Testament, you see promise upon promises upon promises. And then somebody will say, but you know, that's the Old Testament. Those promises were given to Israel. Yes, but we're fellow heirs with Israel. We're fellow heirs with all those people in the old covenant. That's what it says, that this is a mystery. And it is still a mystery to many people today. But it is now revealed unto us by the holy apostles and the prophets of the Lord in the new covenant in the new testament it says in verse 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the grace of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel so now it belongs to us because we're not fellow heirs fellow heirs now we're joint heirs together we're going to possess. I said we're going to possess. As you look at all the promises of God, then, how simple it becomes that this is now your inheritance. Now, there are some people that will say, I'm trying to have faith, great faith. And I say, what for? that I may be able to have everything the Lord has promised. Then I asked a question. I said, what if you have 1,000 Naira in your pocket? What if you have $100 in your pocket? And you know that the 1,000 Naira or the $100 belongs to you. Do you need a great faith to be able to put your hand in your pocket and then take out the 1,000 naira, the 100 dollars, and go and buy something you want? Or they say, no, it's already in my pocket. What do I need faith for? If it is mine already, then I'm saying, what great faith do you need when you have the inheritance already? When you have the inheritance that Christ has. And you are a joint heir with Christ. That the healing belongs to you. Stretch forth your hand and take it. That the joy of the Lord is yours. Stretch out your hand and take it. That the deliverance is yours already. And we don't have to fast and you know, almost become like a skeleton before we can claim our inheritance. It's yours. Stretch out your hand and take it. You see, Jesus Christ, he knew what he had. And he knew who he was. 
And in fact, sometimes before he prayed, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. And I thank you because you always hear me. But that the people who are standing here may know. That's why I'm just talking to you. And then he will say what he wanted to say. And then immediately he will have the result. He knew what he possessed. He knew his inheritance. And when you know that you are joined heirs with Christ, that turns everything around. Joint heirs with Christ. And you look at all these promises of God and say, praise God, I'm a joint heir with Christ. This is mine. That is mine. And then you take it because it belongs to you. The implication of joint heirship. He tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's see those who are not joint heirs. As we have been looking at those who are joint heirs. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 9. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And what this is telling us is that the unrighteous are not joint heirs of the kingdom with Christ. The unrighteous cannot say, yes, I've heard, we are joint heirs. No, it's not everybody. The sons of God, the children of God, because the Bible also makes it very clear, those who will not inherit what Christ Christ is coming and is going to inherit the kingdom. And then we're told, don't you know, know ye, know ye not that your righteous shall not hear in the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. These are not joint heirs with Christ. No idolaters, idol worshippers are not joint heirs with Christ. No adulterers, they are not joint heirs with Christ. No, the effeminate, the homosexuals, the sodomites, they are not joint heirs with Christ. No, the abusers of themselves with mankind, no thieves. They are not joint heirs with Christ. By stealing just a hundred naira, by stealing just five dollars, you strike your name off from being a joint heir with Christ. You lose a lot. And all those things you have stolen, if you didn't steal, you could have gone to God and claimed that as your inheritance. You don't have to steal. When you steal, you knock yourself off from the inheritance list. No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners, no, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It tells us very clearly then, those who are joint heirs with Christ and those who are not Joint heirs with Christ. Number one, the identity of joint heirs. Number two, the implication of joint heirship. Number three, the inheritance of joint heirs. What shall we inherit? As joint heirs with Christ. What belongs to us as joint heirs? With Christ, quite a lot. How can you finish the list of all the riches of God? How can you exhaust the list 
of all the resources that we find in God. But let, let's, let's give you just a little in Psalm 16, verse 5. Psalm 16, verse 5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup that maintainest my Lord. The Lord himself with all that the Creator has, with all that He possesses, the Lord Himself is the portion of mine inheritance. And then it says, And of my cup, thou maintainest the Lord, my Lord. The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My race also shall instruct me in the night seasons. I have searched the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Give me a good amen there. Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, the inheritance of joy is. Colossians chapter 1, reading from verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet. That's an old English word that says, which has made us feet. It's another way of saying, which has made us suitable. To be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He makes us meet, fit, suitable, ready to be partakers of inheritance, the inheritance of the saints. The saints, the saints. Can you remember any saint? Enoch. A saint, partakers of the same inheritance with Enoch, the rapture. Do you remember any other saint, Daniel? Protection, partakers of the same inheritance with the saints. Can you remember any other saints? Shadrach, Meshach. And a bed nigo. He has made us to be suitable and fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. Can you remember any other saints? You remember Peter and John. They didn't only have healing, they gave out healing, and they had the power to heal the sick. And we are partakers of the inheritance with the saints. Can you remember any other saint? Saint Paul. And he has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints. The saints are the people of God. And everything they have inherited, everything we have seen in their lives, and we're praising God and we're saying what a wonderful privilege they had. Look at what this person did. What, look at this, what person had. Look at what this person received when he prayed. But you have the same thing. Because he has made us meet. He has made us fit. He has made us suitable to be the people that will inherit of the saints, partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. We're delivered already. I said we're delivered already. It's our inheritance. That's why you don't put your neck inside any yoke anymore. That's why you don't lock up yourself in the cage anymore. That's why you don't get 
into any affliction voluntarily anymore. That's why you don't surrender your soul to the hands of the people of the power of darkness anymore because you are delivered. It's our inheritance. And because it's our inheritance, we enjoy it. We're not trying to pursue it. We're not trying to chase deliverance. I'm looking for deliverance. We got it already. I'm chasing after deliverance. We've got it already. There are people that are running up and down. They are chasing deliverance. Why, did it, why were you not in church last week? I'll tell you, I went to one place. Where did you go? And they're giving out deliverance there. And I went after deliverance. I'm chasing deliverance. Why are you chasing after what you have already? Why are you running after what you possess already? He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And then he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He's done it already. Why are we trying to get what we have got? Why are we trying to possess what we possess already? Why are we trying to find what is in our possession? It's there already because he has made us meet, feet, suitable to be partakers of